stop wasting your breath. Start working on your own party. Start working on your own issues and see whether you can take my votes in the actual you know, arena of ideas instead of trying to shame me. Last night at about midnight Eastern time when much of the country was coming to the slow dawning realization that the next president of the United States would be Donald Trump, my guest here, Nicholas Sarwark, chair of the Libertarian Party, was saying to the major parties, your tears are delicious. There's gonna be a lot of old party politicians whining and crying tomorrow about all the votes they should have had. Well, you know what I say to that? Your tears are delicious and your parties will die. Nicholas Sarwak, welcome. The morning after of the election. Thanks, Matt. You left out the second line and your parties will die. <laughs> That's right. Well, you know, <laughs> we didn't get a lot of sleep last night here. Um, Explain to the world that's waking up, a lot of people, everyone has Facebook friends here, people in your party uh, in the campaign last night were all complaining about their Facebook friends, blaming them for the election. Um, explain why you feel that their tears are delicious this morning. Because the Libertarian vote, which was uh, a record, it was over 4 million votes for Governor Gary Johnson, which to put in perspective, is about the same number of votes that were cast in the state of Virginia a state that carries 13 electoral votes. Um, that's the size of the libertarian bloc. Those are people who are not going to vote for a warmonger. They're not going to vote for a corrupt corporate crony. They're not going to vote for someone who will continue to pursue the war on drugs or continue to spend our country into oblivion. They're stepping outside of that politics of fear and they're saying, I'm not participating in your clown show. And that's why it's so comforting to be a libertarian today, because it's their fault. If you run bad candidates, you'll lose. If you don't address libertarian ideas, you'll lose. That's just how it works. A lot of people will be waking up and saying, okay, you love freedom. You are against authoritarianism and statism. And because you are on the ballot, Donald Trump is the president, who is the most authoritarian and statist fill in the blank that we've ever seen in our lives. How do you respond to that? As a libertarian, I believe in personal responsibility. So blaming other people for your failings is not really something I'm, I'm on board with. So I don't respond to that. Talk about um, what happened yesterday in terms of the party. You, you've said before that, uh, so you've gotten to three, three million, four million votes, 3.7% uh, is, is- Somewhere in the high threes. I couldn't do the math this and, morning either. I was drinking a lot. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, and so, which is up from one point, you know, oh percent uh, last time. 0.99. percent last time. Um, what happened on the state by state level that you are particularly happy about this morning? So as you probably know, uh, during this election cycle, we spent about three quarters of a million dollars to get our candidate on the ballot in all 50 states because there are still 17 states where we don't have the same ballot access footing the Republicans and Democrats have. Every ballot access win last night puts some of that three quarters of a million dollars back in the coffers to actually run candidates and campaigns rather than spend it on petition signatures and standing out in the rain bugging people to let us have a seat at the table. Um, the biggest wins last night, Oklahoma, where we spent $105,000 to be on the ballot for the first time since the year 2000. So that's like nearly 20% of your money, 15% of your money was just in one state. One state that we had left uh, alone for 16 years because it was that expensive and that difficult. We retained ballot access handily there. So the Oklahoma Libertarian Party will remain strong going forward and we won't have to spend a dollar in to, Oklahoma on that. And to make people understand, and me too, uh, so you're not just talking about the presidential race in 2020, you're talking about every single race statewide, you don't have to spend that time and money. Correct. We're, we ran candidates up and down the ballot in Oklahoma, um, you know, from a standing start this election cycle. So I expect in the midterms in 2018, we'll be much more of a force to be reckoned with there. Uh, I was 16 years ago, I w the morning after the election, I was in Washington, D.C., talking with Ralph Nader and people around the Green Party uh, who were saying, you know, this is just the beginning of a new thing for the Green Party. We're really going to go forward from here on out. We're, we're going to build on 2.7% of the vote. We're going to be the third party in the United States. Didn't happen that way. A lot of people, um, were uh, 
uh, in the electorate were uh, blamed Ralph Nader for Florida, blamed Ralph Nader for the election, and it kind of collapsed. Uh, how do you tell yourself or how do you feel about, uh, you know, is the Libertarian Party where the Green Party was in 2000? Are you, are you setting yourself up for a fall as people wake up the next day and say, oh shit, what did we do? No. Um, libertarians don't feel guilty about this. And that's the beauty of it. As a libertarian, and that's sort of sad for the Green Party because today there's going to be a bunch of Democrats who are going to be yelling at their Green Party friends about how they, they're traitors to the cause and they're the reason that we don't have the first woman president and all sorts of other just nonsense. And they'll probably listen because the Green Party has this problem where they're aligned with one of the two old parties very closely. And so they're, they're susceptible to that guilt trip in a way libertarians just aren't. We believe in freedom and the two old parties don't. So you can yell at me all day long, but I'm not supporting a warmonger. I'm not supporting a corrupt corporate crony and it's never gonna happen. Um, so you should probably just waste you know, stop wasting your breath. Start working on your own party. Start working on your own issues and see whether you can take my votes in the actual, you know, arena of ideas instead of trying to shame me. And you guys competed against the Green Party in every state and? Gary Johnson got more votes than the Green Party nominee for president in every state and the District of Columbia, which typically is a stronghold for them. Are you confident right now that the Libertarian Party is the third party in the United States. Absolutely. Um, we are the only political party in the country that's growing. I, I think that's still the case after last night's results. I haven't seen the voter registration numbers, but looking at the vote totals for the popular vote, voter turnout was actually down in this election, I think, from previous votes um, in this country, and our numbers tripled. So it's a lot of math to do on a morning after a big election night <laughs> party, but that sounds good to me. It sounds uh, it sounds uh, reasonably uh, good. Uh, I know you're the chair of the Libertarian Party, so you don't spend a lot of time worrying about the other parties. But looking at the Republicans right now, there are a lot of people um, who the Republicans just won a big election and they are in complete chaos. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of people talking about a Republican civil war there. How do you see that going forward? Uh, it, in their party and then what might be the impacts on the Libertarian Party? It's not clear yet what's going to happen. I saw the Speaker of the House this morning with way too much makeup on <laughs> trying to put on a brave face uh, on the whole thing and, and crowing about success. There are some possibilities for some good policy to come out. Um, I know people were very optimistic uh, when George W. Bush had both houses of Congress that you would get these traditional Republican things would happen, you know, lower taxes and all that stuff and that didn't work out so well. Um, but it does seem like there may be a, a mandate to get rid of Obamacare, uh, which has been uh, just a terrible failure. I, I live in Arizona. I have a business in Arizona. My employees can't afford to buy insurance. Our premiums are going up by over 100%, and that's considered a success by the current administration. That cannot stand. So maybe some good will come out of it. We're going to wait and see, and, and you know, we're equal opportunity. We're, we're not aligned to either of the two old parties. So we'll look for good freedom uh, supporting legislation and we'll back those things on policy grounds. And we'll call out when you know either of the old parties don't live up to their ideals, which there'll probably be a lot more calling out than backing. Last night on the stage, I think, you said that the work now begins today what happens with the Libertarian Party between now and 2018, let's say? What is the tangible stuff that the LP is doing? Uh, we'll get ballot access back for the Libertarian Party in Ohio. In Ohio, we had Gary Johnson on the ballot, but he was on as an independent due to some cheating by John Kasich. Um, that will not stand. We'll go and recruit and run candidates in Arizona where the Republicans passed a law specifically aimed at, and it's in the legislative history, we have testimony aimed at libertarians to try and keep us off the ballot. And yeah, they kept most of us off the ballot in 2016, but 2018 is going to be a fun year for them to find out what happens when you knock us down. Punching porcupines is not a good strategy. Last night also from the stage you said that this is the most, this is the best ticket we've ever had. That is an item of some dispute among libertarians of both a capital L and small L variety. Uh, do you stand by that assertion on the morning after? I do. I mean, what how is it in dispute? We've tripled our vote totals in 2012. We've had a record vote number 
Um, in the popular vote, we, we control a block of the electorate that covers the spread in almost all, if not all, of the battleground states. We've beaten the other third party that you know even sort of exists in this country in every single state we were on the same ballot. How is that a problem? I, 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 I have... I don't understand. I mean, there are still trolls on Twitter who are calling for my resignation today because we got 3.5% of the vote instead of 5%. You know, I'm not going to take success metrics from people who are haters. That's just not how I live my life. All right. Nicholas Sorok, Chairman of the Libertarian Party, thank you very much for joining us. For Reason TV, I am Matt Welch.